In the main video of part 9, it was shown that the interrupt vectors are expected to be accessible at the very top of bank 0. In fact, not just the interrupt vectors, but the entire internal header of the ROM is found in this area. The interrupt vectors are the only thing that really affects the execution of a game's code, but identification information about the game itself is held here. This information can be used by emulators to know what the expected mapping mode would be and if any enhancement chips are expected to be available. There were three versions of the internal ROM header, all of which were located in bank 0 on page hex FF. The first version consisted of 64 bytes, starting at page offset hex C0 and ending at hex FF. The first 21 bytes from hex C0 to D4 held the internal name of the ROM encoded in ASCII. The hex values of these bytes were limited from hex 20 to 7F, which just meant that the special ASCII characters were not supposed to be used. The byte at offset hex D5 was used to indicate the mapping mode and the high speed switch. Bits 0 through 3 held the mapping mode, while bit 4 was the flag for enabling the 3.58 MHz access speed for the ROM cell region in quadrants 3 and 4. Bits 6 and 7 are always reset, while bit 5 was always set. This is why sometimes the mapping modes are referred to as mode 20 or 30 instead of mode 0. Offset hex D6 held the cartridge type. Bits 0 through 3 denote whether the cartridge contains any ROM chips, RAM chips, battery-backed SRAM chips, or coprocessors. And bits 4 through 7 denote which coprocessor exists on the board, if noted by the first four bits. Offset hex D7 was used to tell how large the ROM image was. The value here is specifically the log base 2 of the size of the ROM image in kilobytes, rounded up to the nearest whole number. So a 3 megabyte ROM image, 3072 kilobytes, would write hex C here, since the log base 2 of 3072 is about 11.6, rounded up to 12. Offset hex D8 was used to tell how large the RAM size on board was. It uses the same formula as before, so a 2 kilobyte SRAM chip on board would result in 1 being written here. If the cartridge contained no RAM, this was just set to 0. Offset hex D9 denoted which region of the world this game was being released to. Offset hex DA contained a value that identified which developer worked on the game. And offset hex DB was used as a version number in case an updated version of the game was released. A value of 0 corresponded to the original 1.0 release, 1 was version 1.1, etc. Finally, the next four bytes stored the ROM image's 16-bit checksum and checksum complement. A checksum is calculated by adding up the values of every single byte in the ROM image. It was limited to 16 bits, so if the sum overflowed, it would just roll over. This was useful to make sure that the ROM data is identical to what it should be at the time the checksum was calculated. Even if one bit is off somewhere, the checksum will be different and you'll know that there's a problem somewhere. The checksum complement is just the 16-bit checksum but with all of the bits flipped. This is needed since the value of the checksum is included in the calculation of the checksum. By including the checksum's complement, it can be certain that these four bytes will always add up to the same value no matter what, hex 1FE. So when calculating the checksum, these four bytes are assumed to sum to hex 1FE. Then the true checksum and its complement is swapped in without changing the sum. Offsets hex E0 through FF contain the interrupt vectors, which was explained in the previous video. This header was used for a little while before it was updated. The cartridge type at offset hex D6 needed expanding. The coprocessors denoted by this byte only contained chips designed by Nintendo, but some third-party companies developed their own enhancement chips, and these had to be identified in a separate location. So the header was expanded an additional 16 bytes, totaling 80 bytes from hex B0 to FF. This updated header was recognized by setting the 21st byte of the internal ROM name at hex D4 to the value 0. In this expanded region, only offset hex BF was used, and the bytes from hex B0 to BE were to be set to 0. If the top 4 bits of offset hex D6 were all set, 
This meant that there was a custom third-party coprocessor on board. Then, the byte at hex BF identified exactly which chip this was. The header was updated one last time to allow for more information to be stored in the new reserved area. In order to identify this version of the header, the developer ID at hex DA was set to hex 33. The 21st byte of the internal ROM name was restored and no longer needed to be zero. Now, since the developer ID was overwritten with hex 33, it needed to be moved to the new area. Instead of copying over the byte, it was converted into two ASCII characters and stored to offsets hex B0 and B1. Now, in addition to developers being assigned IDs, every game was assigned a four-character ID called the game code. These four ASCII characters were stored in hex B2 through B5. Six bytes from hex B6 through BB were still unused and kept at zero. At offset hex B6, the amount of flash memory on the cartridge was stored, using the same formula as before with the ROM and SRAM sizes. At offset hex BD, the amount of expansion RAM was stored using the same formula. This mainly corresponds to the amount of backup RAM used in conjunction with the SuperFX chip. Then, offset hex BE was supposedly used to mark special versions of the game, say, for promotional events. Offset hex BF is still used like in the previous header version. Again, the only data in the header that is required to get a cartridge to run is the interrupt vectors. The rest is just record-keeping information for developers and publishers.